Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the 2025 Initiatives New Moon webinar in Virgo. Today, we will focus on the Sustainable Development Goal 14, Life Below Water. And our focalizers today, Rebecca Frith from Australia, Helena Back Hughes, and Sheldon Hughes from the United States. So, the purpose of our work is bringing creating the focus on the sustainable development uh, goals through the meditation. We gather once a month at the new moon to focus on a shared vision for the common good that is expressed through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We participate in group meditation on those formulated thought forms of solution that address the issues facing humanity and the planet at this time. This SDG's thought forms help create physical conditions leading to transformation and elevation of human consciousness. Through this meditation, we energize and magnetize the vision to be radiatory and to reach as many people as possible in order that the sustainable development goals might manifest through many actions. We use the opportunity of the new moon cycles and available astrological energies to distribute, radiate, and anchor intentions on the physical plane. And as we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation, and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. Thank you for being part of this work. And to prepare ourselves to this work, we come into alignment through our ritual of a naming circle. And I invite Rebecca who to introduce us and lead us through this ritual oh, I think. that brings us together. I think we've lost Alexander's sound. Um, so it's Rebecca here and I'm hoping that, okay. Can you hear me, Rebecca? We can hear you. Oh, thank you, Daniela. Yeah. Today, the technology is a little bit funky. So let's focus on our inner connectivity and persist with our work. Over to you, Rebecca. And I I think Rebecca just lost her connection. So, let's remember that technology is not as reliable as our inner connectivity. So if we lose connection, let's just maintain our connectivity. Uh, and technology will pick up. So let's start our naming circle. And uh, to do that, uh, we will call you by name and we'll unmute you. And you would be able to say, uh, what is your name and where are you from? And uh, I see Rebecca is now uh, rejoining, so she will 
uh, hopefully will lead us through this process. Daniela, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. All good. Yeah. Good. So I will start um, and then uh, I will invite our uh, uh, panelists and organizers uh, follow uh, my lead, uh, introducing themselves and saying where they're from. So my name is Alexander and I'm connecting from Brooklyn, New York in the United States. Daniela. Hello everyone, Daniela here. I'm calling from Brussels, Belgium. Welcome, Daniela. Halina. Yes, hello everyone. I'm Halina and living in Northern California in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains. Welcome, Halina. Rebecca Frith. Hello everybody, Rebecca Frith in Queensland, Australia. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. Sheldon Hughes. Yes, this is Sheldon. Good morning, friends from Northern California. Good to be with you all. Welcome, Sheldon. And now we go to our attendees list. list and we'll go in alphabetical order as your name uh, appears on the list. Uh, Annette. Hello, this is Annette calling in from New Zealand. Welcome, Annette. This is Annette, Annette. from Denmark. Welcome, Annette. Avon. This is Avon Madison, San Francisco Bay Area, USA. <coughs> Welcome, Avon. Barbara. Please unmute yourself. Welcome, Barbara. Barbara Darden. Welcome, Barbara. Karsten. Karsten Damke Jensen from Denmark. Welcome, Karsten. Thank you. Cheryl. Welcome, Cheryl. Christine. Hello, world. I'm calling you from Michigan, USA. Welcome, Christine. Christine Thomas. Good morning, everyone. I'm calling in from Sunshine Coast, Australia. Welcome, Christine. Claire. Hi, everyone. This is Claire with a cold from Dunedin, New Zealand. Good to be with you. Welcome, Claire. Daniel. Welcome, Daniel. Elisa. Hello, Elisa from Brazil, southeast of Brazil. Hello to everyone. Hello and welcome. Irana. Hello, everyone. I'm Irana, joining you from Toronto, Canada. Welcome, Irana. Greta. Hello, I'm Greta from Denmark. Welcome, Greta. James. Hello, I'm James from London, UK. Welcome, James. Joanna. Welcome, Joanna. J 
John. Welcome, John. Yoke. Welcome, Yoke. Judy. Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Judy Harrison from Brewster, Massachusetts. Welcome, Judy. Karen. This is Karen Griska calling in from Glen Eden Beach, Oregon. Welcome, Karen. <laughs> Leslie. Welcome, Leslie. Lone. Hello, everyone. It's Lone from Denmark. Welcome, Lone. Lynn. Lynn from Tucson, Arizona, United States. Welcome, Lynn. Margot. Hello, dear co-workers. This is Margot Rush from the west coast of Canada, Victoria, BC. Welcome, Margot. Maria. Maria calling in from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. Welcome, Maria. Marta. Hello, everyone. It's Martha Gallagher, Seattle, Washington, USA. Welcome, Martha. Michael. Michael, Canada. Welcome, Michael. Paul. Welcome, Paul. Richard. This is Tunji here from the Black Hole Range, Southeast Queensland. Welcome, Tunji. Risa. <coughs> Welcome, Risa. Robin. Hello, friends. This is Robin calling today from Boulder, Colorado. Welcome, Robin. Ron. Welcome, Ron. Rasuita. Please unmute yourself. Welcome, Rosita. Sharon. Welcome, Sharon. Stephen. Please unmute yourself. Hi there, this is Stephen calling from Los Angeles, California. Happy to be here. Welcome, Steven. I'm Ilse. Hi, I'm Ilse from Quebec, Canada. Welcome, Emilse. And there are a few people who joined uh, our circle as we were going around the circle, and we welcome you and extend our group heart connecting through space with each other. And I'm passing the microphone to our focalizers to lead us in alignment. This is Sheldon and um... What I'd like us to do now 
is to settle ourselves in the names that we have both heard, read, and responded to, and those others that we've seen on this, they've gone through the scrolls here today. So we constitute one, one present group. And in addition to align ourselves on a larger scale with all the participants that we're aware of who are participating in this 2025 initiative, goals of which of course are to prepare the way for the externalization, spiritual hierarchy, and planning for the reappearance of the Christ. And all serving groups so that we we sense the, 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 the mounting present activity of servers across the planet. And with those marvelous souls working in the United Nations and with the United Nations and the work that um, the Sustainable Development Goals are designed to, to lift the world through the United Nations itself. And in this more extended grouping that we find ourselves, or at least we can imagine ourselves, we need to recognize that we are ourselves ever drawn closer to working with in the, in the, in the energetic presence of the spiritual hierarchy. And especially as we focus with the United Nations to say a word about how this was the case and remains the case in growing measure. That the United Nations Charter was signed in June of 1945. It's actually birthed in October, of course, but the signatories signed the document in June of 1945. And at the same time, almost on the same day or within days of one another, the Christ made an enormous series of declarations on the one hand and also um, gifts to humanity. The first was the getting out of the great invocation. It's been used as a world prayer for now, gosh, 75 years, close, close, close there on. His decision to reappear um, on, a, on a, more, a more physical form at some point uh, when the conditions are right with humanity. And at least with these two momentous kinds of gifts, one is direct from the hierarchy, the other the United Nations being born. Um, this is what I think has drawn us into even closer into relationship with the spiritual hierarchy in many ways, and especially in the work of the United Nations. Alexander has already mentioned the fact that with this new moon alignment, we are meditating in time with the spiritual hierarchy as it works with the energies of Virgo as they begin to make their way into our consciousness. So we have these series of alignments, which I think grace us with, with heavenly presence and with the, the divine growing presence in ourselves. And in this light, I would like to mention that the life energies of Virgo come to us as light. We receive them through the soul aspect of ourselves. We receive them in consciousness as a blended dual light. And as we receive this light, it becomes ever more possible for us to see from a certain soul level, the word of the soul as DK says, is we, we can sense that I am the mother <clears throat> and the child. And of course, that's each one of us embodied in whichever form, male or female, that we 
find out in, in this incarnation, but with that sense of I am the mother and the child, we can sense that something is trying to happen through us and with us, especially during this time. A higher note of soul, perhaps the triadal levels, to speak esoterically for a moment, clearly at the spirit levels, there is the possibility of us sensing or at least relating in general to the fact that I am God, my God, I matter, am. So we are being lived through during these moments, this, this period of, of a month together through these living Virgo energies, bringing us into an enormous sense of possibility of birthing something new, something better, something higher. So I ask us to be in this greater field, all the groups who are working together for the betterment of humanity, and to stand now even more aware of the conscious impact of Virgo as she works through us, with us. move on now to the next part of our meditative process. And speaking of astrology, and making Helena a presenter. Um, Sheldon, whilst we're waiting for Helena to come on, um, mm -hmm. I just want to mention Dot Maver, who is the third member of oh, the coordinating yeah. triangle. Um, uh, is Rebecca back again? Rebecca Hood? Hmm. Yes, I am. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about Welcome that, everyone. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. And um, yes, thank you for bringing that in. I didn't get to hear the um, naming circle today, but one of the intentions at the beginning of the naming circle um, was to bring in Dot, who is currently in the UK with a small group who are um, seeding and working um, with the impulse of the silent minute and the, the spiritual impulse from Chalice Well. And so we We'd like everyone to hold that in mind as well um, because um, Chalice Well obviously is the spring where the water from the womb of the earth in the sacred <coughs> heart of Britain comes to light. And so um, it's very much aligned with the hidden waters of Virgo and um, Dot is actually holding that energy with that group over there at the moment. Um, and I believe they're now today at Sundial House with the Creative Meditation Group, originally established by Roberto Asajoli. Um, and they are um, in, in working there as well. So that subjective connection is there. And thank you for remembering that, Rebecca Frith. I've also got some beautiful images that Helena is providing of the chalice well. Thank you, Helena. Yes, thank you. I think we need to make sure we can we unmute Helena and pass her. No, I'm unmuted now. I'm, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you, everyone, for this beautiful um, beginning. So today, um, segueing into a little bit of astrology, we have um, with us, and thanks to our good friend, um, my good friends who know astrology well, I received a beautiful um, reminder this morning um, that there is a grand trine in the heavens today with a stellium of planets in Virgo. And if you can see my cursor here, so we have here Juno in Virgo, Mercury, the sun, of course, in Virgo, Mars, 
Venus, Vulcan, and the moon are all in Virgo today. And there is a grand trine, and we have here Neptune in Pisces, which brings the opposite sign in, which I'll be talking about briefly. So I wanted to make mention of that and come back into my slide presentation here. So we have these these energies very much alive and very present with us. Okay. So we could ask, why is this important? And it's been already said in a number of ways, and I'm just going to state it that we are in a new moon period when the spiritual hierarchy most profoundly meditates with the current energies and what is to come and because we are in Virgo we can assume safely that the hierarchy is meditating on birthing the new and reinforcing the energies that will bring about a new birth for the new civilization and for humanity and the energies of the earth so Virgo the Virgin is this sign DK says that is one of the most significant in the zodiac. Its symbology concerns the whole goal of the evolutionary process, which is to shield, nurture, and finally reveal the hidden spirituality. This every form veils, but the human form is equipped and fitted to manifest it in a manner different to any other expression of divinity. And so make tangible and objective that for which the whole creative process was intended. And this is out of Esoteric Astrology, page 251. And this is a huge charge, if you consider it. And in, as we look at the this beautiful um, constellation in the heavens, that she is responsible for birthing the divinity within every form. Virgo is that nurturing force of substance itself. And in the symbolism of the ageless wisdom, it is said that Mary the Virgin, or Virgo, stands for virgin matter, for the substance which nurtures and nourishes and hides within itself the Christ consciousness. In the last analysis, it is through form and matter that God stands revealed. That is the story of the divine incarnation. So esoterically, matter is an ocean, a sea of substance. It is said the earth is not yet sacred, and this is true outwardly. Yet the fact remains that humanity is that that the earth is already sacred inwardly, and it is up to humanity. It is humanity's role to make earth sacred outwardly. And this we do in concert with the spiritual hierarchy and the plan of God. And I would like to add simply that we must simply and profoundly, <clears throat> and I will restate this a number of times, <clears throat> bring our love to bear on all earthly matters. That is a very simple and yet extraordinarily difficult formula to make sacred the outer world. <clears throat> so we'll now consider how shielding and nourishing a life within the form can be seen as water evolving in all the life forms. So this is Virgo's charge is, is to shield, <clears throat> to nourish, and then to reveal the evolving life within all forms. And this is iterative on every level of, of reality. So we want to consider how the shielding and nourishing of the waters evolves the life in all forms. So from a physical dimension, without water, planet life would stop fairly quickly and life as we know it would never have begun geologists say it wasn't until water mysteriously came to our planet 
that life as we know it began. So water is essential to life. We evolved through water. We've all seen images of the evolving human embryo in a sack of water in the womb before the waters break. And esoterically, this is, this is nine months that a child is in the womb, in a physical womb. And esoterically, we move through nine signs to bring the birth of the Christ consciousness at increasingly higher levels. And this number nine is also the number of nine initiations. So we are seeing this, this nine as, a, as an esoteric number. We learn from science that up to 60% of the human adult body is water, and portions of this body are, are greater. 73%, for example, um, the brain and heart are composed of water. The lungs are 83% water. The skin, 64%. And the muscles and kidneys, 79%. And even the bones are one-third water. Our earth is about 71% of the Earth's surface is water covered, and the oceans hold about 96.5% of all of Earth's water. So esoterically, let us think of the cleansing heat of life that are available through the inner divinity, the Christ that is being born within, and what Christ, the planetary Christ, will bring and is bringing through all soul-aligned workers. As water is related to the waters of life, to those abundant waters described in the sign Aquarius, of the life more abundant, we are remembering that it is the planetary Christ who will bring the waters of life, am I, poured forth for thirsty humanity. Virgo is today nourishing the spiritual waters of our inner divinity to come forth and nourish those conditions of matter for the planetary Christ to come forth. And we see in Pisces the opposite to Virgo, a water sign, that it is bringing the saving force the healing, salvational waters flowing to and through Virgo to birth, thereby reveal the God-man, the Christ. As with the individual, the collective human, humanity, will be birthed as the one soul of humanity in due time to walk the plains of Earth. And Virgo, along with the planet Saturn, rules time. Virgo reveals in time the evolutionary process. Water in the human dimension is symbolized and experienced as emotion. And this is significant when considering our physical bodies are comprised of two-thirds water. So when the emotional waters have not been purified and controlled, they can be turbulent or stagnant, explosive or destructive. And there is a direct relationship with the emotional turbulence of collective humanity and the weather patterns and storms on our planet. As these astral waters are transmuted into the heart, at once they begin to vibrate and draw upon the higher waters of Buddhic love, the waters of life, the love of God and life more abundant is known. This Virgo nurtures in every human being through the soul born through all forms, thereby revealing the divinity of God imminent. When the human form reaches its climax in Pisces, it is finished, and we have a God or gods walking the plains of earth. The same will be true for humanity, born to move to its destiny as a divine center in the body of the Logos in due time. So it is through Virgo, an earth sign, giving birth to these forms through substance that the waters of life will flow more abundantly, bringing with it a salvational force to all that it touches. 
So let us imagine a world where this is true. Now, before turning this over to Sheldon to introduce goal number 14, life below water, at another, from another turn of the lens, I want to introduce and emphasize a principle in relationship to the United Nations that <clears throat> we think, believe, is foundational to its, its forming, its founding. And that principle is called the instinct to synthesis. And it links the sustainable development goals to the plan of God for humanity, working through the spiritual hierarchy, making these goals exceedingly significant in humanity's real role in this period of human history and giving us real, genuine cause for hope for a desired future. In the, in the Tibetan's words, I quote, the trend to synthesis is an instinct inherent in the entire universe, and man is today only awakening to its immediacy and potency. God's instincts are stronger and more vital and pure than are those of humanity, and must eventually triumph, giving and coming forth into full flower and expression. All the lower instincts with which man battles are but the distortions in time and space of reality, and hence the value of the esoteric teaching that by pondering upon the good, the beautiful, and the true, we transmute our lower instincts into higher divine qualities. The attractive power of God's instinctual nature with its capacity to synthesize, to attract, and to blend cooperates with the unrealized potencies of man's own nature and makes his eventual at one minute with God in life and purpose an inevitable and irresistible occurrence. This instinct to synthesis is a synthesis of soul with matter and a synthesis of soul with spirit, completing the unification and the destined at one minute which underlies our deepest soul desire for union with God. The sweep of this instinct to synthesis underlies all universes, constellations, solar systems, planets, and kingdoms in nature, as well as the activity aspect and achievement of man, the individual. And so it is that it stimulates the aspiration in the hearts of humanity for receptivity to the good, the true, and the beautiful. And these are the energies that will bring in the new creative era, which will sweep into expression to think and create the new forms for the new ideals. And here then is the underlying principle for the founding of the United Nations as what we consider the head center for humanity on behalf of the good of the whole of humanity and the whole of the world. And this is what Virgo is shielding and nurturing and revealing on a worldwide scale. Through this functioning body, we will build the new culture and new world civilization as the soul of humanity comes increasingly into fuller expression. So this we affirm when we see from above, seeing as the hierarchy sees, and manifesting from within without. Thank you. Okay, I will pick up and um, <clears throat> we'd really like to Give an illustration, I think, of, of how this is working itself out very practically. But just to remind us, this ocean <laughs> goal, purpose to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, the seas, and marine resources for sustainable development, life below water. 
what I'd like to do is um, see if we can show you a very short uh, piece of a video of Peter Thompson, who is UN Special Envoy for the oceans, you might say. And um, we happen to, I happened to discover this just watching a little bit more about it. And seeing him just speak for, that's a six minute video, we're gonna show you about three minutes of it. And we will have a link to the full, full video um, in, the, in the chat box for you to look at later. But I'd like to show you this um, so that you get, a, you get a sense of the kind of presences that are in the United Nations. And some of the great individuals who are clearly working on behalf of humanity as a whole. And in, in the, and look at from the point of view of our growing cooperation with the spiritual hierarchy, um, at least for me, um, I had the sense that this is a person who may not be aware of his role, um, but is acting as a messenger, acting as, as one of the ones who is already beginning the process of, of at least preparing the way in a very visible way for, for us um, through the United Nations such that it becomes, you know, saying, the head center for humanity. So if we can start this, do I start this? Uh, maybe I do. No. Um, Alexander does. Probably. Alexander needs to put it on okay. his phone, I, I guess. Show the first three minutes of this, three minutes of 20 seconds. So we'll three see if you can hear us. Yeah. Yes. But just watch him. You can hear him, listen to what he has to say. And since the since the energy and the presence of, of this excellencies ladies and gentlemen all courtesies observed i send you warmest greetings from the united nations in new york and wish you well for a productive east asian seas congress 2018 in the philippines greatly regret that i cannot be with you in person due to pressing official duties in africa excellencies the ocean covers almost three quarters of the planet. It's difficult to overstate the importance of the ocean for our life on this planet. Every second breath we take comes from the ocean. It's the source of much of our food and of our water. We travel and trade upon it, brings us joy and economic benefits in the shape of the world's tourism industry. It is clear that appropriate management of the ocean resources will be the key to reducing poverty and to achieving the sustainable development goals. But the ocean is in trouble, thanks mainly to the accumulating effects of human activities. In particular, climate change having its effects on the ocean by raising temperatures, leading to rising sea levels, species migration, death of corals, changing ocean currents, and causing dramatic climate events. Climate change is reducing oxygen levels in the ocean with huge implications for marine life. Also affecting marine life is the continuing acidification of the ocean due to CO2 levels in the atmosphere. With a more acidic ocean, making life difficult for marine life, particularly for shellfish and corals. Meanwhile, plastic waste has permeated the ocean at an alarming rate. Science has made it clear that plastic is being ingested by marine organisms and that it's everywhere, even in the depths of the Mariana Trench. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the positive news is that we have a global plan to rectify the troubles that humankind has brought upon the ocean. I refer, of course, to the two great international accords of 2015, the Paris Climate Agreement and the UN's 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. As I'm sure you know, within the Sustainable Development Agenda, there is the Oceans Goal, SDG 14 to conserve and sustainably use the ocean's resources. Faithfully implemented around the world, these global accords will indeed allow us to bequeath a healthy ocean to our children and grandchildren. But we must be vigilant and act with unwavering resolve if we're to get that much desired outcome. In June last year, the UN Ocean Conference proved to be a turning point in raising the global alarm on ocean change and putting in place a worldwide surge of ocean action. The conference produced carefully crafted call for action, adopted consensually by all member states of the United Nations, and I urge you all to revisit it 
on the website oceanconference.un.org. It will give you the guidance you may need in your ocean action work. Over to you, Phil. Thank you, Alexander. And please make the, um, the organizer presenter again so I can put my slides back up. Thank you. So we wanted you to see this uh, for several reasons, but um, one of the ones was just to sense the, the, the presence on our planet today of, of extraordinary individuals. And there are, probably, there, are, there are some among us here signed up for this particular SDG um, on in this time of Virgo. And there are people working in the United Nations today um, who have the good of humanity, not only in mind, but are, are working. So when we've had a chance to take a look at, at, this, at these 17 Sustainable Development Goals, it becomes clear, at least to some minds, um, that the fact that this is actually going on and happening is a sign that, that there is a growing movement toward allowing the United Nations to act as it was designed to act in the first place, as a center, head center for humanity, where leaders can exchange ideas and thoughts for the greater good. And as I say, for me, I'd like to get your, register your own re responses, but as I watch this um, presentation, I just had a sense I was listening to somebody who was sent to us as, as um, whether he knows it or not in his background as an example of what's more to come as we move forward with this kind of unfolding in ourselves. And I would ask you to also to think about the other movements that are going on in the world today. And I'm, I'm gonna just list one that's basically in the general field of climate, climate action, but also has to do with the waters, the ocean course. We see here a, a slide of Greta Thunberg from, from Sweden landing after her trip across the ocean, you know, not using any, any external resources to speak of. And, and one of the leaders of, I'll call it younger people, maybe children's too, a little of designation, but young people saying we must get a hold of this climate issue now before it's too late. We have the rising here of young people, hopefully in us, we're not so young anymore, to make this work. So as we think about, as we, as we notice that there's a beauty about this, but just the truth of, of, of what needs to take place, this is what ties us, as I was pointing out, with those instincts, God's, God's instincts in us for the whole plan to manifest. Uh, it's a very large plan and that, that highest level, but for us, for an earth, a planet that works for the good for all. So with that, just want to um, turn it back to uh, the meditation park with Helena. Thank you, Sheldon. We just wanted to include this slide showing the, the beauty of the forms on Earth and the whimsicalness of them. And yet, we as humanity, knowing what is happening behind the scenes that would affect these gorgeous life forms especially in the polar caps of our planet. <clears throat> so let us move into meditation now and take a few deep breaths in the energies of Virgo, this great shielding nurturing, revealing force in the evolutionary process that which when taken on consciously is greatly accelerated. So let us begin by sounding an OM and bringing all our energy centers into alignment and into vibratory power.
And bring our awareness to the group field that we here stand as a group. And as a unified group with all world serving groups around the planet. Let us imagine ourselves standing around the planet in one unified breath our hearts united across the distance Extending our group light to illuminate and experience the loving heart of Gaia that is ever present in the one life. Let us expand our awareness and look at Mother Earth through the eyes of Virgo in all her beauty and all her wonder. Even through all the present challenges, knowing that there is a divine plan for the Earth and for humanity. And we begin with this premise that we see the sustainable development goals as a blueprint for all the countries of the world to come together through the United Nations. And let us attune with the energy of Virgo, giving birth to the United Nations at a new level of expression. That these goals, these 17 goals, represent the revelation of humanity working together in concert with the spiritual hierarchy. to create an outer manifestation of a sacred planet. Let us consciously call upon the Virgo mother energy Active now, today, for this month. To give birth, greater birth. To goal number 14. Life below water. and linking it to the life of the waters of life.
let us call in consciously the shielding, protecting energy when needed, the nourishing energy when needed. And the revelatory, revealing energy that brings life into form. When needed. Let us just take a few more minutes. To hold this thought in mind and enter into the silence together. Let us register our impressions. See this goal expressing <clears throat> through various initiatives, desired outcomes, realizing the livingness behind, building our resilience all over the world, and anchoring this thought form and distributing this energy that we have gathered by sounding the mantra let the forces of light bring illumination to all humankind let the spirit of peace be spread abroad May all those of goodwill everywhere meet in a spirit of cooperation. May forgiveness on the part of all of us be the keynote at this time. Let power attend the efforts of the Great Ones. So let it be, and help us to do our part. O oh, Bertha, Father, Mother of the Cosmos, focus your light within us. Make it useful. Create your reign of unity now through our fiery hearts and willing hands. Help us to love beyond our ideals and sprout acts of compassion for all creatures. Animate the earth within us 
so that we can feel the wisdom underneath supporting us all. Untangle the knots within so that we can mend our hearts, simple ties to each other. Don't let surface things delude us, but free us from what holds us back from our true purpose. Out of you, the astonishing fire, returning light and sound to the cosmos. Thank you. So we can move into the discussion and open the floor to all participants. To join the sharing, we invite you to raise your hand and we will unmute you. And uh, many uh, stayed unmuted after the naming circle, so you could just unmute yourself and share. So Alexander, whilst people are formulating their questions and comments, um, I found a, a section from Discipleship in the New Age, Volume 2. I apologise, I don't have the page number, but um, may I share it with everybody? Of course. Okay. Please. Give to each other real love in the times that lie ahead. For it is the fusing and illuminating element in the life of the disciple. Let not your love remain theoretical, but give that true understanding, which ignores mistakes, recognizes no barriers, refuses all separating thoughts, and surrounds each other with that projecting wall of love that meets all need wherever possible, physical, emotional, and mental. It is this which blends the group into one organized whole, which the masters of the wisdom can use in the service of the plan. The pressure at this time is great upon them and the urgency of humanity's cry grows stronger in their ears. I have given you much time and thought, and earnestly I have sought to aid you on the way. My love and strength are ever yours, but not always my time and attention. My earnest prayer is that the light may enfold you and the love of God transmute your lives. Thank you. Sharon, you unmuted, please. Yeah, thank you, Sasha. <laughs> I wanted to, um, uh, first of all, 
uh, thank the presenters, Helena and Sheldon, and and the triangle. Um, I guess that supports the effort and everyone on the line. Um, the energies of the new moon always call to me in a special way, uh, since the focus seems to be on strengthening the hands of the new group of world servers, which is really critical um, in support of the sustainable development goals and world uplift, the loving salvage of the world. Um, so the sustainable development goals, as um, I've come to see it, um, uh, focuses on two main things. It, one is strengthening the hands of all world servers and the redemption of humanity with the right use of money. Because the new group of world servers needs money in, in large quantities. So at the, at the new moon, I often um, place a focus on that. And, and from the work that um, I've had the privilege uh, uh, to be doing at the United Nations with my close co-worker here I see is on the line, Martha Gallihu, um, is, is to actually uh, look at uh, world servers around the world that may not know that they're world servers or that may not recognize their spiritual intent but the UN knows that the sustainable development goals are not going to be achieved unless those people around the world keep their hands on their heart and try to really tend to and care for, nurture and nourish community right where they are. Um, so in particular with this um, SDG, I'd like us, um, if I could be so bold as to invite us to do this, but I'm just sharing, I guess, what my own uh, inclination is at this point. And there's uh, women um, in different parts of the world, fisher women, that are breaking stereotypes uh, in their community or in, the, in their country. Uh, and what they are doing is uh, learning, first of all, how to be a fisher woman and then extending that knowledge that they have uh, to their community so they can have uh, sustainable uh, local commerce uh, in their community. Uh, because the next challenge that we have with the sustainable development goals is the fact that there's this uh, centralization um, that's going on where we know that the sustainable development goals will not be done unless there is a decentralization but we're actually at the point now where local communities are constantly um, working perhaps against the tide of, of um, uh, central corporatization of the world's resources and the UN has has done a very fine job, in my eyes anyway, of of being very Libra about it all and not really coming, um, just calling everyone, everyone to the table um, to achieve the sustainable development goals. But I, I have a special place in my heart for those that are working um, in their own communities in their own way. I, I, I think it's the only way. And anyway, so I probably said too much, but I uh, so appreciated the meditation, the presentation, and the group focus on the sustainable de development goals. Thanks so much. Love to you all. Thank you, Sharon. Thank 
Uh, there was a, a question from Margot uh, asking uh, Rebecca that uh, reading that you did right after the meditation, if you could share that. It was almost like a mantra. Oh, if I can share that? Um, yes. As in send a copy of it? Yeah. I, I think that was uh, the question, yes, the request. Yeah. Yes, certainly, yes. Yes, it's, um, it's from the Aramaic, it's an Aramaic um, translation of the Lord's Prayer. So yes, I'd be very happy to send that. Thank you. Alexander, I see a couple of other messages in the chat box as well. Do you have them? Carsten's um, posted a link for a free course about water, start, I, starting on the... Yes. I, yeah. I've reposted it in the, in a the chat uh, window, so um, please uh, chat, uh, check the uh, chat section of the control panel. There are several messages uh, coming from this circle that are posted there. Yeah, so Avon has um, mentioned that Peter Thompson was key in the UN conference on oceans in 2017 um, and that Pathways to Peace sent a delegation including the lead science scientist and coordinator for cleaning the plastic pollution in the oceans and she um, thanks for the excellent presentations and the focus on SDG 14. And Michael has um, posted some astrological references, which I don't fully understand. I'm not sure if you've posted them, Rebecca. I'm sorry, um, pa Sasha. Yes, I reposted them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool, thank you. And I just uploaded the Lord's Prayer that uh, Rebecca yeah. read before that it's in the handout section. Um, PDF file. Thank you. And there was also a question uh, if the slides uh, could be shared, uh, Helena, that you were showing. Um, yes, um, if you want the slides, I think it'd be best to write me um, directly and um, I can send them to you. And my my email address, I'll, I'll type it in the chat box. It's, it's Helena2000 at AOL.com. Great, thank you. Um, Margaret is asking where exactly the uh, prayer is posted. It's in the control panel. There is a section of the control panel that's called handouts. If you click there, you will see that there is now one file uh, for you available for download. And Shauna, you're unmuted. If you would like to uh, join the sharing, uh, you raised your hand, Shauna, so you're unmuted. My apologies, it was just an error. Uh, I'm enjoying what I'm hearing, and thank you very much for talking about 
both the oceans and the fresh water. Very interesting, especially in Virgo, which is an earth sign. So we have the two coming together as one. Thank you, John. Yeah, and, and the reminder that the opposite sign of, of Virgo is Pisces, which is a water sign, and they're always in relationship. So it's um, Pisces bringing these salvational waters to the earth through birthing higher and higher forms to receive this, these new waters of life. So that's one way we can, we can link those together. And Joanna, we see that you're unmuted now. Did you okay. want to say something? <laughs> I, yes, I do. I can't seem to move the screen up to unmute myself. So can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Well, thank you, Helena and Shelton and everyone else. I am trying to click on the Lord's Prayer, the PDF file in the handout section, and it does not open for me. I just wondered if someone could check that. Maybe it's me. And uh, you know, I double click it, it doesn't open. Just a question. We could also copy and paste it into the chat box so that people can then copy and paste it. Yes, done. It's there. Done. Beautiful. <laughs> and also, you can see there Helena's email right above. Um, I, I, I wonder if Martha could um, would feel to talk to us a little bit about the circle meeting that um, she, Iris, Helena, and Sheldon shared at the Seven Ray conference about the SDGs. Martha, if you would like to uh, speak, just please raise your hand and we'll unmute you. Thank you for this invitation. First of all, I'm deeply moved <coughs> by um, this webinar's ability to integrate <coughs> what we where we draw the source of our strength from uh, linking the cosmos to the waters of life that um, are, are so embedded in our very beings today. <clears throat> I believe in the, in the um, presentation at the Seven Rays Institute, which has <clears throat> launched a project that the New Moon webinar group will um, show in the future in the, around the time of Libra with regard to redirecting the flow of money. <clears throat> the essential task that I think we were working on was alluded to by but in relation to this presentation I would point out to the our own capacity to imagine how beauty uh, connecting to the waters of life in beauty uh, inspire us in a loving way to bring life to the practical work that goes on in terms of um, life underwater. At that presentation, we emphasized the indivisible, universal, transforming nature of the goals in general. And as it might apply to this particular webinar, which was communicated through so much beauty uh, and appreciation, I would just lift out the work that's going on in the United Nations trending towards synthesis through law. And that one of the most um, developed 
and still challenged um, uh, sectors is the sector of how maritime law is um, mandated to help governments recognize what is harmful into the oceans with the, with the oceans. And so there's an aspect of the law that is working to um, address some of the harm that's caused by sonar exploration or the dangers of mining under the ocean and how it affects the oxygen supply that, as pointed out, every other breath comes directly from the ocean. So um, one of the great appreciations I have for these New Moon webinars is the opportunity to be lifted up and out of some of the immediacy that points to the danger of our times, and yet the opportunity for the new group of world servers as one in meditation to strengthen our hands to see through these immediate problems into the greater uh, depth and breadth of consciousness that enlivens us as we recognize how both urgent and how humanly possible to reverse all of this. I guess if, if I were to say the one thing that maybe links the presentation in May uh, that Helena and Sheldon actually so took the lead on seeing that it was presented uh, as best it could be, is to, is to remember these webinars truly are about us in our divinity us as mothers, us as nurturers, as, as revealers in hope. And so I would simply say in thinking about the uh, waters, the life under the land, lift up in our intentions the work of the maritime lawyers who are struggling to uh, get us to the right place in right relationship with water. Thank you so much for giving me the chance to speak and thank you to the uh, triangle uh, folk that, that it brings together the focalizers in such amazing webinars. Thank you, Martha, for those thoughts so much. There is a a chat. Would would one of the focalizers like to to read it? No one has read it yet from Yamilsa. So I can't see all the chats, Alexander, um, I don't think. I can read it. Yeah, that would be great. Emil uh, wrote, I do ha have this visualization of cleansing the waters of our being, every river, every source of liquid to be illumined. A great start to radiate the signification of the holy waters. This is a divine perception after the meditation. Mm. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, Alexander wrote also such a full, profound, authoritative, and expert presentation uh, on this SDG. Thank you for this gift. It has been eye opening as well as soul lifting. Appreciation for the video. The image of the Virgin and the Earth was exquisite. Thank you. Mm. Mm. 
Thank you. And Eliza wrote, the Lord's Prayer is already printed here. And Eliza is in Brazil. I thanks magnificent work you all had done. It is so constructive to feel the way all around our planet. Great gratitude from Brazil to all of you. Mm. Thank you, Elisa. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I'm feeling everyone's waves of gratitude. You know, it, it's like um, the the water the, of love, the gratitude as love. Um, gratitude as the waters of love permeating and sweeping through the ethers, through all of us and into the into the planet. It's really lovely. And Martha, thank you very much for letting me um, put you on the spot like that and for being so <laughs> gracious. <laughs> thank you. We we actually had a positive conspiracy amongst the three of us that we do that <laughs> if Martha didn't speak up. <laughs> Thank you, Martha. <laughs> and thank you, three of you, for bringing this focus on this goal so powerfully. That light mm. and love and power restore this world on earth. Yes. We're coming to the closing of the uh, hour and a half of our work. And uh, we invite you to join us on this journey, continuing this journey together. And uh, on the, in the next cycle of Burger Libra, we invite everyone to bring your focus to the goal eight, decent work and economic growth. And that um, within this month, from this new moon to the next new moon, we will together build up this thought form, energizing it, uh, and to radiate it together on September 29th, when we'll come for Libra new moon webinar together. And uh, our next uh, full moon webinar will be um, on the topic of right relationships with the planet. And we will continue our uh, topic of right relations uh, that we focus in the science of mutable cross. And we will continue this topic that Rebecca, Helena, and Sheldon started today about our Mother Earth. Thank you. And Rebecca, you wanted to uh, share some organizational announcements, right? Re Rebecca, yes. Hoot? Hello, yes, too many, a lot of Rebecca's, not too many, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> Have you got those slides there, Alexander? Or yeah, yes. okay. Never so, too many rookies. That's right. You can't have too much of a good thing. Um, <laughs> um, we're just inviting everyone to participate in the focalizing process. Um, so we have um, some spots available in some of the forthcoming webinars for the goals and we warmly invite anyone who is interested in any of these goals um, and who is interested in supporting this shared group presentation process and um, building the group field together in this way to um, email us at the 2025 email um, and let us know if you would like to be a focaliser for one of the forthcoming webinars. Um, and then I think the next slide is 
if that's still there, Sasha, it was just letting everyone know because we do have a lot of people asking about where they can, where you can listen to the recordings, um, and we do, we are posting the recordings on the YouTube channel. Um, and if you go to the playlist section, you should be able to find the New Moon webinars recordings um, a short time after they've been held. So, um, and then it's really time to close now. Do you have that final slide, Alexander? Yeah. So we'll just close with this thought um, and a moment of silence uh, before I voice this little mantra that Dot created. So we just take a moment to draw together all that's happened on the webinar today and let that drop into the silence for a moment. And may the spirit of peace be spread abroad in our hearts, through our groups, and throughout the world. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.